What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with the review for the haves and the have nots. This is season what is it? Season 8, episode number 14, titled Pink Unicorns. Alright, you guys, so I don't I have a lot of time. I got time today, but I don't have a lot of gas in my car. So I need to put gas in my car. So I don't know how long we're gonna be with these videos today, but we're definitely gonna get into them. We're gonna talk about them. Now, before we actually get into the review for the haves and the have nots. If you guys are watching this channel or any other channel on any other video on the channel, you're not already subscribed. Why are we still going out, you guys? Why are we still going on these dates? And y'all not pay for them. Like, hit that subscribe button, you guys. Now, I'm really, really close to my goal of a thousand. I am 39 subscribers away from a thousand. So it would really mean a lot to me if you guys would subscribe to help me get to that 30, you know, get to that point. Now, before we now with that with that out of the way, without further ado. Let's go ahead and just jump into this review, shall we? All right, you guys. So the episode, we pick up where we left off in the last episode. You guys remember, in the last episode, Jim dropped the bomb on us that Celine killed Amanda, right? Selena said that she didn't even kill Amanda. He was like, oh, but yes, she did. She was like, no, I didn't, Jim. She says, I wasn't. He says, she says, I didn't even see her. He says, yes, she did. You were the last person with her. And he, she was like, why are you doing this, Jim? Why are you doing this? He's an asshole, number one, Celine. He's an asshole. So then Veronica was like, I know what he's up to. He was like, she was like, you do? She was like, yes. She was like, Jim, tell her. He's like, oh, no, since you know so much, you tell her. She's like, oh, no, Jim, you tell her. So what Jim is trying to do is Jim is trying to frame Celine for the murder of, for um, Amanda's death, right? I don't know how he's going to frame Celine unless, I mean... One, you have to have a murder weapon to frame her. Two, you would have to have some. You have some to have to have some kind of evidence to prove that she did it. So you would have to have a murder weapon. You would have to have her prints on the murder weapon, or you would have to have um doctored video footage of her allegedly killing um Amanda. So I don't know how he would do that, but it's Jim, so he can do. I mean, he I'm, I wouldn't put anything past Jim, but you know, suffice it to say, Veronica's like, you know what, Jim. You can do whatever you want to do, but I'm still serving you, and you still have 24 hours to get Celine her money. Well, we all know Jim is not going to be able to do that because Hannah is over the estate, and he has to go to Hannah to get money. So that is not going to be an easy feat. Speaking of Hannah, Hannah goes over to Wyatt's crib, right? Remember, um, Veron not Veronica, but um, Catherine wanted her to go over there to check on Broderick, tell Broderick to call her, right? So hannah walks in and there are two girls in the bed with broderick which i was kind of confused i was just thinking to myself in that entire scene where's wyatt at because you guys remember in the last episode wyatt came to the house i mean wyatt came back to the to the loft and wyatt was there so i'm like how did how was why is wyatt not sleeping his but you know what if i remembered it wyatt was on a bend so Hannah sent the two ladies that were in the bed with Broderick on their merry way. <clears throat> so then Broderick begs and pleads with Hannah for her not to tell um, Catherine what happened. So then Hannah asks her, like, what's going on? With, what, what's the relationship between you and uh, Catherine? So he says that she's, some, you know, she's a friend and, he, and he, she helps him. And then he helps her. Basically, she's really just helping you. You, you know, um... Yeah, he said they take care of each other. But once again, like I said, he's begging and he's pleading with Hannah not to tell Catherine what she just saw. Good luck with that one, Betty, because she's going to tell her. But good luck with that one, homie. Um, Let's pause here and we'll move forward. All right, you guys. So these mercenaries, I don't remember either one of their names. Um, So Jim's mercenary and Veronica's mercenary. This scene right here, I really honestly could have done without this scene. This scene with the mercenaries. And I'll tell you guys why I could have done without this scene when we get to it. So you guys remember, in the last episode, Veronica's a mercenary, which I forget what his name is. But I'm glad that they said, um, you know, Jim's mercenary's name. Because Jim called his mercenary as they pulled into a garage. So Jim's mercenary's name is Akil. So um, Akil's phone rang. And, he, and you know... Um, Veronica's a mercenary told him to answer the phone so he answered the phone so is Jim telling Akil that Veronica has left and to go handle that so then here's where and here's why I say 
I really could have done without this scene and the other scene with Akil and Veronica's mercenary. So once they hang up the phone, Veronica's mercenary tells Akil that he's going to kill him, right? So, so Veronica's mercenary is holding a gun to him. I'm like, in what real life would this kind of stuff happen? A mercenary is going to tell someone that I'm about to kill you? And let the other mercenary... And it's two mercenaries. So y'all are hired... Kill, y'all are people that are hired to kill other people. I don't know any mercen... Well, I don't know any mercenaries, period. But I don't know. That was just unrealistic to me. You got a gun on him. You telling him he about to die. Why didn't you just say, pop, shoot him, and he's dead? But no, but no, 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 no. Instead, a kill was able to get Veronica's mercenary's gun and they start having this, this this terrible tussle with each other. I was like, that is just the most unrealistic thing that I've ever saw in my life. And I've saw some shows with mercenaries. I'll give you guys a perfect example of a show with a mercenary and he is, his nickname is called, his nickname is Stone Cold. General Hospital. There is a character by the name of Jason Morgan. Jason Morgan is a mercenary. Jason kills people for a living. And anytime Jason goes to kill somebody, Jason never says anything to the person like, I'm about to kill you. Jason is so good at killing people. When they when they see him, they're like, you know what? I know I'm dead. Go ahead and you know, go ahead and shoot me. They don't fight him because they know that they can't. But this dude, this dude here literally just said, I'm a, you know I'm about to kill you. I was annoyed. I was thoroughly annoyed. But let's move over, you guys. So, Benny. Benny called Rihanna, right? And Rihanna tells Benny that he can move into the house tomorrow. And he's like, okay, cool. So, she's like, I just need to give you the keys. So, he was like, okay. So, he was like, where can we meet at? She was like, um... They couldn't figure out a place at first. Then he says, okay, well, how about we meet at the house? She says, that works. He says, okay, I'll meet you in a little bit. She says, no, how about we do it tomorrow? So, then they said, okay, cool. So, then they hung up the phone. Then she calls back. And she tells him, you know, she's sorry. He says, oh, no, you don't have to apologize. Like, I wasn't going to let it go down the way that it was going down, which I agree with her. I agree with Benny. So then, you know, she, she's like, so what does he mean? What did Sandy mean when he said you killed his kid? She said she had an abortion. And she says, you know, she feels badly about that. And she just feels like what's going on with her and Sandy currently is her karma. Nah, baby, but that ain't your karma. Sandy is just a little punk. That's what that is. So then she's like, I don't even know why I told you all this. She says, you know, I've been drinking. He says, well, you know, you shouldn't be drinking alone. And she's like, no, it's okay. He's like, I'll come over. She said, no, it's okay. He says, I'll come over. Text me the address. They had a back and forth with that. So suffice it to say, Rihanna texts him the address. So when he got the address and text message from her, Han- Candace came out of the bathroom. Candace said, Mitch, I mean, not Mitch, but Benny, don't go anywhere because that family is pit, you know, Especially with Sandy. Sandy is pissed right now. We don't know what's going to happen with the the, the alone. So stay put. But no, Benny's going to leave. I'm like, oh God, Benny, you're really been a stupid person right about now. But we'll move on. All right, you guys. So next up, let's talk about Mitch, right? So Mitch. Mitch finally went to go see Uncle Benny, right? So he asked Benny, where's Mama Rose at? And Benny says, Mama Rose put me in charge. They had a back and forth, right? So, Vinny eventually calls Mama Rose. Mama Rose tells Mitch that she is in Florida. She's done with this. Vinny is running things. Oh, God. The thing with me with Vinny is Vinny is just like... Vinny and Sandy are the same person. Literally. The difference between Vinny and Sandy is Vinny is not a scaredy cat, whereas Sandy is. But they're both hotheads. They're both hotheads. They both have ill tempers. Like, ben, Benny and Sandy are literally, like I said, cut, they're the same person. One is just about that action. One just is not. So, um, Mama Rose does tell Benny that she's not happy with what he did, right? So then she hangs up the phone. <clears throat> so then Benny asks Mitch, where did he get his truck at, right? And he says, you know, got it from, he says, we got it from Candace, right? He's like, yeah, you know, they're my friends. So then Vinny mentions to Mitch that Jim told him that 
Mitch told him that Benny and Candace were protected, but he didn't know nothing about that, right? And he was like, I don't like to be lied to. Like, and then he was like, you know, um, Jim and David have done so much for this family. Your uncle, your grandfather, your mother, his mother. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm cool with that. So he says, you know, you got to be punished, right? And, you know, Mitch was like, okay, yeah. Oh, that's my song. I know what you want. Bustin' Rhymes with Mariah Carey. It just came on the radio. I'm going to listen to that when I finish this scene. <laughs> um, so, yeah. He said, um, what he, so he says, yeah, you know, you got to be punished. So, so Mitch was like, okay, I, that means that you're not going to protect Benny and Candace anymore, right? He says, yes. And then also, um, Mitch is going to get his ass beat. So one of the, one of the muscles come in to beat up, uh, Benny. I mean, not Benny, Mitch. Mitch tells him, you know, whatever you do, just don't go for the face. He's like, oh, nah, baby, we got to go for the face. That's what he's going to want. Um, so let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, so we're back. So Catherine, Catherine called Hannah, right? So Catherine asked Hannah, did she see Broderick? And Catherine was like, yep, I saw him. And, you know, Catherine, not Catherine, but Hannah was kind of, you know, a little um, meek when she was talking to her. Not meek, but she was kind of like, you know, girl, I know something, but I don't know if you want me to tell you kind of stuff like that. So then, you know, Catherine picked up on that and Catherine was like, what is it, Hannah? So Hannah was like, well, you know, when I went over there, um, I saw some women, I saw a woman, she, did she say some women or a woman? It's one of the two she said. I think she said women in bed with him. I, I mean, because it's what it was. It was two women in the bed with him. So they had a back and forth conversation, right? So Catherine asked her how many women were in bed with him. She says it was two women in bed with her, with him. So Catherine says, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to go and get the sheriff and put that, you know, put him out of my place. So Hannah was like, you know, I can do that tomorrow morning, right? So then Catherine was like, you know what? Why don't you call him on three-way? Because he's still not answering the phone, right? So Hannah calls him on three-way, right? Right. So when she called him on three-way, he is sitting here telling Catherine, oh, she's lying to you. Oh, it was my sister. Oh, she, and Catherine was like, your sister was in the bed with you? She's like, he was like, no, she wasn't in the bed with me. She was on the couch. She's lying to you. So then you guys know, if you guys don't, if you guys have never gotten a collect call from someone in pr- here is the thing about this. Here is the thing that I have a question with. Catherine, at this point, Catherine has not been in jail. I don't even think Catherine has been in jail three days yet. Catherine has got more phone calls. Like, Catherine has gotten so many phone calls in, in jail while she's been there. Like, she's gotten a lot of phone calls. She's gotten a lot of phone calls. Because who, I mean, she has really gotten a lot of phone calls. I'm just putting it out there. Like, I, I just, I thought about that when I was watching the episode. I'm like, damn. She's been in prison. She's been in jail for a few days. And she, I don't even know. She, actually, I don't even know what she's been in jail for. I don't really know. That's the thing with this show. I don't know what the timeline is. I don't know if it's 24 hours or if it's 48 hours. But she's gotten a lot of phone calls. So but suffice it to say what I was trying to say, what I was saying was before I got off on that tangent. Catherine... You guys know when you call somebody from prison, they'll interrupt you and tell you how much time you have left on the phone call. You have one minute left on the phone call. You have 30 seconds left on the phone call. And and if you guys don't hang up, they'll hang up for you. So he heard things like, wait a minute. Which it, did, it still doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, oh, okay. Now it makes, I had to think about it. I'm like, what he said didn't make any sense. But it does make sense. Because I'm like, she could have just called you collect. But I, I thought about it. She called Hannah collect. She called Hannah. Hannah called him on three-way. He didn't realize that she... But it's still... I mean, it's still really stupid that he didn't think about it. He didn't ask that question like, wait a minute. How did you call me? How, wait a minute. I just thought about it. I mean, I'm going to go down another rabbit hole. I hate going down rabbit holes. But Broderick is really stupid. Because Broderick asked her who called him. How, wait, how did you how did this how did you call me? He didn't think about it. He just answered the phone. Like, I'm sorry. When it comes to me, I don't answer phone numbers that I don't recognize them. So obviously, Broderick answered. He didn't know who Hannah was, so he just answered the phone call, and there was Catherine. But you didn't think to ask. Wait a minute, Catherine. You're in jail. This is you didn't call me. You didn't call me collect because I didn't accept the charges. How in the hell did you call me? 
Who is this that just called me? You know what? Let's move on. <coughs> so she, so Wyatt was in the background, and Hannah, you know, Catherine heard him. She asked Hannah to go check on him. Girl, I wouldn't. So the two killers, Akil and Veronica's mercenary. Oh my God, this scene right here was worse than them fighting. These have got to be the the most. Um, these got to be like entry level mercenaries. This is what they're giving me. They they must be entry level mercenaries. So they must like they must be at the ground. You know they must have just started being a mercenary and they're working their way up the ranks because they said and have a whole conversation with each other, right? So a kill. They're talking about how much they're getting paid. So Veronica is paying her mercenary fifteen. 15 I hope that's 15,000 he didn't really say he didn't really specify and I don't remember Jim is paying 30,000 to um, Akil Veronica is threatening to have her mercenary deported so they come up with the plan the plan is that what they're going to do is Veronica's mercenary is going to tell Veronica that he killed, um, you know, Akil. Akil is then going to go and kill Veronica. Now, here's where Akil lost me yet. Akil's dumbass picked up that damn gun and handed it to Veronica's mercenary and got in the car with him. I'm like, dude, how smart? Even I'm not even a mercenary. I know that that was stupid. I'm not going to hand the person that was just trying to kill me, their gun back. I'm going to put that gun in my back pocket and hold on to that motherfucker. Like, I'm going to hold on to the gun. Child, I really can't. But let's move on. Lord Veronica, this woman really works my nerves. This hate-filled woman. So Veronica went to a gay club, right? Been her typical rude homophobic self. She was looking for the owner, and there was a drag queen that was at the door. And, I mean, that drag queen was better than me. Because I would have gave Veronica a old-fashioned beatdown, the way she was talking to her. Like, she was just rude and disrespectful. Like, the, the most disgusting person that I could, I mean. And then she found the guy that she was looking for. I don't know who he is. Have we saw him before, you guys? Please let me know in the comment section, because, I mean, I don't remember him. I actually, I actually feel like I do remember his face. I just don't remember him per se. Let me know in the comment section, guys. Please, please, please. And then when she got on the dance, she wanted something to drink, right? She didn't want them to put it in a glass. I'm like, what do you think they have? Cooties? Like, what is this? Just bring me the bottle. Are you paying for this bottle? So then she goes through, you know, she goes out and she starts trying to vogue. And I'm like, Veronica... I don't like y'all, but y'all sure do know how to, um, you know, how to dance and have and party. That's when, that's what I, I don't like a, a homophobic person like that is a typical homophobic person. Some they 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 want to take some of the gay lingo. They want to you know have the gay men and have the gay men beat their faces, do their hair, do so much for them. But you have such a disdain for them. Oh, God. All right, guys. So then let's move over to Conley. Oh, my God. Conley, Conley, Conley. So he found Candace. Candace opened the door. When he when she opened the door and saw him and he said who he was, I would have If I was Candace, I really would have slammed the door in his face. But Candace is better than I. She, she's better than me because I would have slammed the door in his face and, and told him to get the hell away from my door. So then he tells, he's telling her, oh, Charles loves you. Oh, this. Oh, that. Oh, you know, his first wife, you know, um, she committed suicide. He wasn't at home and the kids found her. But you can't tell anyone I told you that. I don't buy that at all. And then he's like, oh, and you're you're so good for him because you're a shark. She's like, he's a shark, too. He's a baby shark, basically, is what he's trying to say. I don't really know why we needed that scene. I, I still don't understand it. So let's move on, you guys. I'm going to wrap up the episode.